Next, we will be looking at problem 9 in chapter 14. In this problem, a small company is contemplating an initial public offering in which they will sell 40,000 shares of stock and the IPO price is given by these probabilities. In each of the next five years, there's a 30% chance that the company will fail, which means there's a 70% chance that they will succeed. And each year they do not fail, the stock value is in going to increase by a log normal distribution with a mean of 1.5 and a standard deviation of 0.5%. The question asks us to look at the stock value at the end of five years and the chances that the company will still be around. There are several ways of modeling this. I look at the simplest way of analyzing the situation and uh, we'll start with the base case as usual. For the base case, I'm going to assume that the company never fails. So I have one for each year, one meaning not fail and zero meaning fail. And then I'm going to assume that the value increases 1.5 each year. So the spreadsheet doesn't have too many interesting formulas. I have the initial price that will be generated from my probability distribution here. Then each year the price is going to be in previous year's price times 1 plus the percentage value increase. And the final value of the stock is going to be the initial number of shares times the final price of the stock. And then in order to figure out whether the company is running or not, I actually use the product function, which multiplies all these zero ones. And if at least one of them is zero, then I'll get a zero as a result of this function. And if they're all one, then I will get a one. I could have also written any function here, something like this, if and this is one and this is one this is one this is one this is one then one otherwise zero what this will do is if all these five cells are one then i'll get a one because i use the and option and if at least one of them is zero then i'll get a zero this is another way of modeling whether the company is running at the end of five year or not but i'll keep the product function because it's much more concise now that i have my base case the next thing i will do is add simulation parameters to this model the first thing i need to do is make sure that the success and failure options are modeled so for that, I go to cell D9, I go to the analytical solar platform ribbon, I go to distributions. Now this time I'm going to choose a discrete distribution. The first one I'll choose is Bernoulli. Bernoulli distribution is a discrete distribution that takes the value of 1 with success and 0 with failure. So that's what I'm going to do. I click on it. It says, well, which cell are we addressing? Well, we are dealing with um, cell D19 and the probability parameter right now is 0 0.5. That's the success probability. So I'm going to make that 0.7. Then I hit OK. As you can see, probability of 1 is 70%, probability of 0 is 30%. I hit save. Now, if I look at my value here, I get, I get to see Bernoulli parameter. Now, if I want, I can copy this and I can paste it to E19 through H19, provided that I make the C12 reference absolute. So I'm going to do that. So now I have created these parameters. The next thing I'm going to do is model the value increase. So the value increase is given to me by a percentage 
that's defined by the log normal distribution. Now, let's go to distributions again, choose common, and then go to log normal. Now, why are we using the log normal distribution here? The good thing about the log, log normal distribution is that it will not give you negative values. Normally, the regular normal function will have a tail on either end. You can have very large positive numbers and very large negative numbers. But in certain scenarios, you may not want to get negative numbers. Although in this case, the stock increase may not materialize and you can have a decrease in stock value. This model doesn't want you to get any stock value decrease. That's why we're choosing the log normal distribution, which prohibits negative percentage values here. So we need to choose the mean. The mean is going to be C15 and the standard deviation is going to be D15 and I hit OK and I hit save and as you can see I have my PSI log normal function here and again I'm going to make this absolute value so that I can copy paste it. The last thing I need to do is model the initial price. Right now I have 10 as my base case, but it could take any of these six values with these probabilities. These probabilities mean that there is a 10% chance that your IPO is going to have $10 value, 20% chance that it's going to have $13 value. And as you can see, the most likely one is 12. How do we model this? You go to C21 where you will model the IPO price, you go to distributions, you go to custom, and in custom you're going to choose you're going to choose discrete. When you choose a discrete custom option, it asks you what values do you have and what weights do they have, which is exactly what we have here. These are the values for the price that we think it might take and these are the weights for each price point. So values we're going to say 10 through 15 and the weights are going to be these six values. I hit OK and as you can see I see my values here. 12 is again the most likely. I hit save. Now I have a model that actually gives me the value of the stock after five years if the company doesn't fail. Now the next thing I need to do is tell Excel that these two cells need to be observed because I'd like to see how they will be summarized, how sensitive they will be to the uncertainties of these parameters. So for that I click on C23 and I say output in cells as you can see now I have a PSI output added to that function. I will do the same to running. I go to C24 and go to results, go to output, choose in cell. And again, the formula here has changed as well. Now I'm ready to run my simulation model and see what's going to happen. Now I go to simulate choose run once and you may not see your output immediately you can go to model and then it says you have your uncertain functions you double click on the base and you see the possible final value of your stocks now let's look at the mean here the mean is around five hundred and thirty thousand dollars uh, I want you to think about this particular histogram and try to figure out why it has these peaks every now and then with some low values in between. This is something that I'll ask you guys in class. Let's also look at the histogram for the probability of running. Then I double click on this. I will see that there is an more than 80% chance that the company is going to fail in five years and the chance of it's going to be still run after five years is less than 20%. If I want to get a slightly better value here, I can choose 0.5 as my lower cutoff. It tells me there's an 83% chance it's not going to be around. There's a around 17% chance it will be around.
That concludes our analysis for problem number nine.